Hey you doing everyone? Welcome to Bits in the Basement for this, what should be the very last episode in this whole restoration of an Amstrad CPC 6128 to try and sell it on and buy a VIC-20. Now if you've been following the previous three episodes, you'll know that what I've done is cleaned up the keyboard, I've cleaned up the entire system, and I've put it through a few electronic tests to make sure that the keyboard is working, the memory is working, the ROMs are right, and the I.O. ports are working properly in it. So the only thing that's left to be done now that all those tests have passed is to check and see that the three inch disk drive is working properly because that's a complete unknown for the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart. I'm going to have to give it a good clean and then dust down because it's full of dust, the exact same as the rest of the system was before. And we're going to have to change the drive belt because it's, it's perished. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is oil and grease it and then we're going to put it through its paces. We'll see if it can load up programs, if we can save a program to disk and if it can read it back from disk. So that's pretty much what's on the agenda for today. So uh, without any ado whatsoever we'll belt on, we'll get into the scene if this old 3 inch disk drive is working or not. Today what I'm going to be doing is looking at this 3 inch disk drive that came in the Amstrad CPC 6128 that I bought not too long ago. So this is the last thing that really needs to be fixed up and uh, we should have a completely working system. Now this isn't the first time that I opened this drive because I started making this video a little while back and I got as far as removing the drive belt that was in it, one that was perished, which is these are pieces of it that are left but it's it's completely in, in pieces. Now the reason that I didn't carry on with that video is that my little phone camera decided not to record any of that. So I said, look, we leave it for another day. I put the drive back together and well, today is another day. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to take it apart again. We're going to clean it up. We're going to grease it, oil it, whatever needs to be done with it. And I took this belt from my own uh, Amstrad CPC. So we'll try that belt in this system. And if it works great, we leave it in it and I'll buy a new belt for my own system. But I don't want to be buying a belt if this drive isn't going to work. So anyway, to start on this, we turn it over this way. And these little drives have three screws in them holding them together. So we have one here, one here, and one here. And we can remove those with just a regular Phillips head screwdriver. So our three screws are removed. And uh, now we can access this board by lifting it ever so slightly, but we still can't quite get into it. And the reason for that is that there's a connector in here and there's also a connector in here on the other side. Now what we'll do is we'll remove this little connector here and generally that is enough to allow you access if you just lift up the board ever so slightly like that. You can see into it usually and you can access the drive belt and all that but what I decided to do was I decided I would also remove the um, the little connector on the opposite side here to let me get in at the board a little bit better and then I went one step further because there are a couple of points where there's cables actually soldered into the board here from the underside and what I did was I removed some of those points there with my solder sucker so that I could gain I could gain complete access to this whole section here now I've already removed the drive belt that was on this and I gave the capstan this little guy here the little copper roller here and also this roller here a very very good cleaning with alcohol on a cotton bud just to um, just to clean it off completely to get all that rubber residue off it and and well it's quite clean now at this stage but we'll we'll give it a little run over once more just to be sure There we go, we'll get any, any residue that's on it or any residue that's left on it off of it. Now, excellent. I'm going to give it a good little clean down as I'm here because I can see dust in here with a little paintbrush just to get just to get any dust that's in there on the underside here out of it. And there we go, that should do us. And what I'm going to do also is I've got a drive belt here that I'm just going to going to put onto this because it seems to be the only thing that's really wrong with well I hope it's the only thing that's wrong with it, is that the drive belt was perished. And 
we just wrap it around this belt here or wrap the belt around this little spool here and we bring it up and over the capstan and then we can move this here just to make sure that it's sitting correctly in on the little copper capstan here and also in this guy here as well there we go that seems to be working fairly all right and um, so apart from apart from any little bits of dust in there that seems to be fairly good there we go there's nothing under here that really needs cleaning all that much so what we can do is i can put this part back together and then we can turn our attention to the other side of the drive so what i have anyway i've got these cables here that need to be connected back so there's a yellow and an orange one and there's a brown and a red one and this is the thing that's really great or i find to be really great any bit anyway about amstrad systems is that they always mark on their boards uh what color wires go where so i've got here i've got y and O. so i've got my yellow and my orange go here and i've got br and r so i know that my brown and my red go here so i really can't make a mistake which is which is very very good and um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to solder those back as best I can and and we'll see where we are from there okay just before we go any further uh, I'm trying to put these wires back in and I'm having a lot of trouble doing it and the reason for it is I don't want to actually turn this drive over that way because there's a little pin that is found right right here and this here's the little read write pin and you'll see that it comes up and it can be taken out altogether in fact here we are so that there is little read write pin for this drive and the problem is if i turn it over and that guy falls out and i don't see it or i lose it i put everything back together i won't be able to write the disc anymore because this guy is part of the mechanism that uh, controls the the lock that doesn't allow you to write to disk when you've got the switch flicked over on the little disk itself so that's part of the write protection mechanism i suppose so that goes into its little hole down here and it needs to stay in there so i want to be careful not to lose that guy out of it um so now i've got these two to put in and then i can connect all the rest of it back together Excellent. There we go. That's that fella plugged back in. And this guy here will sit in there. Now what we'll do is we'll slide this board back back in place and screw it on. So we want to be careful to make sure that this lead goes into this little hole here that's that's made for it and that the board sits in under this little plastic tab here and once those two things have been done we should be able to line it up with the screws again and just pop the little screws back in so we should be good we should be good with the belt changed at least at that now so coming around to the top side here this is where most of the servicing needs to be done because what we have is we have two motors we have this guy here which is the stepper motor and we have this guy here which is the motor that drives the little belt that we replaced to make the disc spin around and um, so uh, these are our two motors there's a worm screw on this which as this motor turns it's the stepper motor so as it turns ever so slightly clockwise or counterclockwise it'll move this guy here which is the read right head back and forward across the surface of the disc so this little worm screw here is going to have to be greased so that it has free movement and also the read right head little bar that it slides up and down on which you'll see here if if you can see it there there's a bar here that it slides up and down on we'll have to put a little grease on that as well now uh, this here if i lift it up you'll be able to see this here is the the read and write head 
So that gate is going to have to be cleaned also because that needs to be clean in order to function properly. And what else we have is just to clean it up. So what I have is I've got some of this stuff. It is a silicone based lubrificant. So you don't want to be using really uh, WD-40 or anything like that on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the slightest little drop on the end of a toothpick here and I'm going to drip it just into the capstan here just like that and as I turn this it'll turn the capstan ever so slightly it should let that stuff get in there now what I want to do because this is a little mistake I made when I serviced my own CPC and the problem was that when I did this some of the oil got onto the drive belt and actually caused the drive belt to start slipping on me when I was trying to read the discs and uh, it took me a while to figure out what the heck was going on but I managed to clean it up and get it sorted out so it's one that when you put just the slightest drop of oil on this guy be careful to take off any of the residue because you could end up causing yourself problems if not but there we go that should be fine and um, back around this side uh, okay I'm going to put a little bit of grease on this guy here and on this here now I don't have uh, any silicone based grease so what I'm going to use is a little bit of Vaseline and I'm going to put that on with the other side of this toothpick here I'm just going to put the smallest little amount just across this here because you don't want it getting everywhere either and it should be more than enough just to just to grease that up and um, while I'm at it I'm going to put a little bit just on this bar here as well there we go a slight little bit like that and now what I'll do is I'll once again move this this little drive head back so that we coat that grease well across the bar and across the little worm screw and once we've gone pretty much the full way on that what I'll do is I'll put a little bit on the other side of each one now so the very last thing that needs to be done really before before we give it its first initial testing is to give a little read right head a clean dip a cotton bud into the smallest little amount of alcohol and lift this guy out of the way I'm just going to rub it onto the read right head like that just to give it a good little once over the other thing to make sure of is that there's a little bit of felt on this guy here because this is actually this is the part of the mechanism that pushes the disc against the read right head and if there's no if there's no material on this or no uh, felt on this as the disc turns the plastic will actually scratch and ruin your disc on you so you need to make sure that there's a little bit of felt stuck to that there we go so that's pretty much that this drive is ready to put in to that Amstrad and see if it's working or not now so I'm after opening up the old Amstrad and it's time to try and pop this drive back into it to see if it's working or not and actually it is very very easy to do because there's only two connections to be made on the drive there's power and there is data and that's all so the power here has actually two voltages on it it has 5 volt and it has 12 volt and that just plugs in to the back here like that and the data cable if you remember when I disassembled it I made a note that the little red wire here on the right hand side was over to the to the right hand side of the drive so that'll just plug back in like that and that's it that's all our connections made to the drive all we have to do is set it back in nice and comfortably and make sure that it's not catching or snagging on any wires or anything and the very final thing to do when we're when we're going to be enclosing everything back in together again is to make sure that we pass one of the screws the screw here on the bottom that's going to be screwed in here through this little ground lug so that uh, the drive chassis is connected to ground okay so here we are it's more or less crunch time on the old drive to see if it's working or not so 
where after giving it a good little service, it's plugged back into the Amstrad. The Amstrad is working away fine. So hopefully this drive is going to work too. Now, one thing we have to do that we didn't have to do up until now is we're going to have to connect this power supply because that drive needs both 5 volts, which is supplied by the Amstrad itself, but also 12 volts, which is supplied normally by the Amstrad's monitor. But seeing as I'm not using the monitor, I need a second 12 volt power supply. So this is it here and that's going to plug in there and that will give me the 12 volts I need for the drive here. So what I've put on this is a little test program called RPM and it'll tell us if the drive works and if it can load it up, how fast the, the drive is spinning. So we'll know if it's spinning at the correct speed or not. So it should be anywhere between 290 and 310 revolutions per minute. So what I'll do is I will pop in this disk. And we type cat and can it read it? Oh, there we go. It's after reading the disk. So that is excellent news. Very, very good. So I've got my RPM program here along with Rick Dangerous, which we'll try in a minute if, if RPM is fairly okay. It should be though. So I type run RPM. Okay. There we go. So we're, we're a little high. We're at 305 revolutions per minute. Now I could change it, but if it's, if it's working fairly all right at that, I'd leave it so. I mean, it's, yeah, 305, 306. So we're within that 290 to 310 tolerance. We'll see if we can run that little Rick Dangerous game. There we go, Rick Dangerous is working. That's looking good so far. So what we'll do is we'll do what I always do and we'll write a little hello world program to see if it will save it. Cat should find world on it again. It does and run world. There we go, excellent. <laughs> okay, perfect, that seems to be working. Everything is working perfectly, but you'll see I left RPM run for a little while and you'll see that after a while, it's after going up to 310 revolutions per minute and it's going up and down and up and down, but it's still just on the cusp of the highest point. So what I want to do is I want to bring that back down to about 300. So the way I'm going to do that is on this little motor here, the one that drives the disc as it spins, there is a little hole that's covered by a piece of rubber. Now it doesn't look as though this rubber here has ever ever been broken before but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small small screwdriver and I'm just going to pierce this rubber with it and inside there's a little adjustable potentometer and as I turn it in real time I'll see the RPMs on the screen either go up or down depending on what way I turn it so I want to turn it until this comes to about 300 and it should remain there hopefully anyway. Ah there we go. So I've got, the, I've got the screw found. Now I want to adjust it gently, ever so gently. Until I get it down. There we go. That should do it. Now, so there we go. I am quite happy, I have to say. I'm after restoring this system more or less completely. Sure, it's got some cosmetic issues. It's a little scratched. It's a little knocked. And there's a couple of little broken pieces of plastic here and there. But all around the system is working perfectly. Everything, keyboard, drive, ports, and all that. Also, what I've done is I've made up two power supplies for it. So I made up a five volt power supply, which generally it needs to have a 1.7 amp supply. I used a two amp supply, so it's more than what it needs. Now normally the Amstrad calls for a 0 0.4 amp 12 volt power supply. What I have there is a 1.5 amp 12 volt power supply. So it's more than adequate for running the disk drive. So the only thing really I have left to do before I box this up and get it ready to sell is to make up a video cable for it. Now on top of that, 
what I'm going to be selling with this system to try and get the best price I possibly can is obviously the system itself the TV cable the two power supplies so it's all ready to go also I'm going to include a disc that has one side blank so that whomsoever buys it can write their own programs and save it onto disc and the other side has two games on it it has invasion of the zombie monsters and also that um, space game that I used in some of my videos that I can't remember exactly what the name of it is and also I'm going to throw in this little joystick as well with it so whoever buys it pretty much has a system they can game on out of the box now just go a little further into what I did on testing the drive because there's a few extra things I did off camera you saw that I adjusted the speed on the um, on the drive itself the RPMs to bring them to 300 which is really kind of the optimal place to have the speed of the floppy disk drive well with my own CPC when I was working on the disk drive within it uh, I found that there are some situations where it can function absolutely perfectly but when you go to format a disk you have problems and the reason for that was the drive speed was too fast just a little bit too fast I think it was running in around 320 revolutions per minute so it was enough that it could actually write to disk it was enough that it could read from disk and access disk and everything seemed fine but if I formatted a disk I ended up with a disk that couldn't be used so there was a problem with that so I ran a format on a disk and this is formatting disks perfectly so um, I'm quite happy with that as well uh, yeah and I've been testing away on this system off camera for many 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 hours as well just to be sure that it's working properly because I don't want to sell it if it's not and I am happy out with it so that's pretty much the end of this series uh, I hope you enjoyed it if you did think of subscribing if you haven't done so already give us now a thumbs up because it helped the channel fantastically and uh, think of leaving a comment below I try to answer all comments that are left and um, yeah that's pretty much it so there will be one little kind of update video but it'll be at the beginning of when I get my Vic <laughs> which hopefully I will and uh, I'll go into how much it cost me to do all this how much I got for it and how much the Vic cost and all that kind of thing and we'll do a little a little update and see um, see how it all went and then we'll take a look at the Vic I got if touch wood I managed to get one and that's enough droning on for this look i'll see you in the next episode in the meantime take very good care of yourself and each other i will talk to you all very very soon see you later bye bye